Good morning, good afternoon. This is Lauren Wenzel. I'm the director of the National Marine Protected Area Center here at NOAA, and I'm very happy to welcome you to one of our monthly MPA series with Open Channels and EBM Tools Network. Uh, so thanks to them for helping us organize this. And we're really excited today to share with you some of the highlights from the International Marine Protected Areas Congress that was held in September in Chile. And so we have a couple of different speakers for you today, and I will go ahead and introduce them. And I just before I do that, I wanted to mention that um, there will be plenty of time for questions and answers, so please be sure and write in your questions. Um, if you were there and you have observations or things you thought were particularly important, please feel free to share those. And if you weren't there and have questions about what happened in specific uh, topic areas, please feel free to share those too. So our speakers today include uh, Dr. Gonzalo Cid, who is the International Coordinator for the MPA Center here at NOAA, uh, Dr. Dan LaFoley, who is the Marine Vice Chair at the um, World Commission for Protected Areas, and he's joining us from the UK. And then we also have, uh, from the Ministry of Marine Affairs in Chile, we have Diego Flores, who is the head of the Department of Protected Areas, and Felipe Paredes who is a specialist in marine protected areas. So as you can see, we have a uh, worldwide group of folks who are here today to, uh, to talk to you about this terrific conference. And I'm going to, to just give a brief introduction of a couple aspects of the, um, of the conference before turning it over to our first speaker. So if I could have the next slide. So before the conference was uh, began, we actually had a side meeting of the MPA agency partners. And this is a group of high-level leaders from countries around the world who are active in marine protected areas who meet to share ideas and exchange best practices and really try to advance the leadership of marine protected areas among the countries that are really stepping up. And this, uh, this partnership is open to new countries. So we're definitely interested in welcoming in new countries who are willing to commit the time and, and particularly having that high level leadership involved. And so you can see here there were um, representatives from France, from Mexico, the United States, Chile, Canada, and Australia, as well as IUCN. So it was a great way to kick off the meeting. And the next slide. And. Uh, here we're going to just show you the animated logo of the Congress. Um, can you go ahead and start that? And what you'll see here is just a, a really beautiful animation of the sea life and the way people interact with the ocean. And I think this was really inspired by the theme of the Congress, which was about um, bringing people and the ocean together. You can, uh, you can watch this online. It has some music that goes with it that's very, uh, very nice as well. It doesn't come through today. Okay. And then next slide. So now uh, it's my pleasure to turn it over to our first speaker, Dan LaFoley. Thanks, Dan. Thanks so much, Needlon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So um, the first thing I'd like to say uh, from our UCN side is what a pleasure it was to work with uh, the government of Chile, with our colleagues from Chile on who are going to speak later, because it was been a real ambition for us from our UCN, working with the hosts of IMPACT, to bring it to new places and this was really a massive opportunity of impact for to bring it to, to to south america to latin america and and what we we saw happen at impact for was really a continuation in the the massive and growing interest in marine protected areas the the series is held every four years and impact one in australia we had around 500 uh, people and and since impact three it's been well over a thousand and, and impact four in Chile was, was really no exception. We had over, I think it was nearly 1,100 from 59 countries attending. And as Lauren said, the, the theme of this was bringing the oceans and people together. 
so it was a real massive opportunity to to both hear from some of the countries we'd heard we've heard from before at Impact, but also to bring in many players, many individuals from the region, which was one of the the fantastic um, opportunities that Impact for both presented and was actually realised. And I think it's a, a tremendous achievement what happened. As Lauren said at the start, there was the, the, the MPA leaders meeting, but also before impact, there were a number of field trips that, um, that participants could go on to experience the postal and marine uh, environment um, around uh, Chile. The, the venue, uh, this is the Enjoy Hotel, um, the venue was in La Serena, uh, beside the coast, that's some 400 kilometers north of um, Santiago. Uh, next slide, please. And so we had a tremendous opening uh, ceremony, which really uh, portrayed the uh, the spirit of the the ocean um, around Chile, the 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 local communities, um, and was really really a fantastic setting to to open this event. Next slide, please. So one of the things that happened each of the mornings uh, were plenaries. This was an opportunity to to really explore in conversation different aspects of um, marine protected areas uh, and the broader uh, ocean environment and communities. Um, this one on MPAs and global change uh, really came at a, a, a real kind of moment, I guess, in terms of the fact that when we held Impact 4, various parts of the world were also experiencing quite extreme uh, storm events. And I think one of the things was the fact that MPAs um, enable us to to understand and uh, and establish baselines as the oceans continue to change, and certainly this impact was the time when we probably had no more information than ever before about the scale and nature of the the gross changes happening in the with the marine environment. There are some some really interesting conversations around the the relationship between marine protected areas and climate change. And these also linked then into sessions uh, during the, the remainder of the day, looking at things such as um, uh, marine protected areas as perhaps climate reserves. So really pushing the envelope and uh, challenging us in our conversations. I mean, I think more broadly, we drew out of these things the, the fact that marine protected areas allow for refuges, for resilience and, and recovery. And really also that they act as sentinel sites, those sort of laboratories. So it was these types of conversations that opened each day. And uh, the next plenary we had was, next slide please, on MPAs and coastal communities. So this was where we brought in representatives from, from Hawaii, uh, Juan Ferdinand Islands, Rapa Nui, and Honduras. And it was a real opportunity to, to tell powerful stories about why marine protected areas uh, are so integral and so important to, to local communities. Next slide, please. And for example, one of the, uh, the stories in motion. Um, we also had uh, plenaries on uh, effective, uh, effective management, effective MPAs. So this was again a real opportunity to talk about uh, from individuals' experience on the stage, you know, what, what is the recipe? What do we need to do? To, to make uh, not just paper parks, but effective marine protected areas, um, pulled from different perspectives. And again, this then led into sessions such as talking about uh, the green list of, uh, of uh, marine protected areas. This is something IUCN has working with countries to, to engage people in, um, in, in, in the route, in the, in the journey towards effective management. And this enabled us to, uh, to, to work certainly at Impact 4, for example, uh, with partnerships to support the Polynesian network um, of marine protected areas. Next slide, please. And then, and then the final plenary on, on the Friday was looking at MPAs in our uh, shared future. So this was really looking at different perspectives about the challenges, the opportunities and the issues as we move forward from Impact 4 uh, past the uh, 2020 um, uh, target for the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity into um, what will be Impact 5, which we'll hear a little bit more about uh, later on in this presentation. 
Uh, next slide, please. I think one of the uh, one of the great things which have been growing over the years and really came to fruition at Impact Four was the engagement of the next generation, uh, young professionals, students, um, and this is uh, the Ocean Science Camp. Uh, students from Chile who not only came together but also uh, were volunteers and uh, and helped run um, a highly successful congress. From from the IUCN side, we had young professionals there, and one of their achievements within uh, starting on Monday and finishing uh, Thursday lunchtime was actually to make a film about Impact uh, Four called Making Waves, which you'll be able to which you can uh, view online. Next slide, please. So one of the other things that happens around impact um, events is the opportunity to have business meetings. And, and as we've seen with the progress with marine protected areas over the, uh, over the past few years, large marine protected areas have become a trend. And we have uh, something called Big Ocean, and they had uh, the Big Ocean meeting bringing together representatives of large marine protected areas around the world. So, so there were other, many other meetings around Impact for bringing the community together over particular themes. Next slide, please. But for, for the very large scale Marine Protected Areas group, I think you know, Impact 4 was a real landmark. They've been working for many years um, on guidelines for large scale MPAs. And this was the, the moment that those, that version one, if you like, of those guidelines was launched to enable other countries who are thinking about uh, very large marine protected areas to, to gain the knowledge and experience through guidelines about how to set these things up, how to run them, how to make them effective, and how to undertake surveillance and monitoring. So that was uh, a real, one of the many real achievements which was, which was launched at Impact 4. Next slide, please. And this is just another, another uh, photo of the, uh, the big ocean community coming together. Next slide, please. I think also we saw at Impact for um, a recognition of the need for standards. And so the uh, Global Ocean uh, Refuge uh, Initiative gave three awards uh, for marine protected areas around the world, um, uh, recognizing uh, how well they're both, both highly protected, but also how well they're managed as well. Next slide, please. We also, uh, for the first time from IUCN, one of the things that we've been pushing for for some time is to ensure that the, the awards mechanism recognizing outstanding individuals in conservation has been expanded, uh, would be expanded to, to cover ocean champions. And we were delighted to, uh, to award the Kenton Miller Award for Innovation in MPA Management to Jobo Sakamura from uh, Palau. Uh, and this was in recognition of the leadership the role that he'd taken with colleagues to protect the, the, the whole exclusive economic zone around Palau as a marine protected area and the innovative um, management processes and sustainable financing techniques that they were developing. Next slide, please. It was also an opportunity to bring together the World Heritage Community so under the leadership of Fanny Duvia at uh, uh, UNESCO Marine World Heritage Center, uh, we've created over the, the previous impacts, uh, the, the, the framework and network to coming together of all the MPA managers for the 40 plus marine world heritage sites around the world. And so this provided an opportunity not only to give uh, sessions on particular aspects of marine world heritage, but also again to have business meetings bringing that community together so that we can we can get multiple value out of the the congresses that we hold uh, with the host countries next slide please it's also an opportunity to 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 really try and get our heads around some of the more challenging issues especially in the uh, in the uh, post 2008 financial climate around sustainable financing so I think this was an opportunity to, to take a look at this, to uh, start driving forward on some of the, uh, the innovative uh, mechanisms that uh, countries and regions are using around the world, but also I think a recognition that we need to look more at this as we move forward in future years and expand both the people and the tools involved. 
Next slide, please. And finally, from my segment of this presentation, uh, we launched a, uh, a special issue of aquatic conservation. Now, we started doing this um, some years ago, and this was in recognition of the outstanding information that people present at these global events, that there's a tendency for it to take some time to actually get into publication. So with a partnership with uh, Wiley and Aquatic Conservation, we're now producing a special issue uh, for each of the major events, not just uh, impacts, but also World Conservation Congresses and World Parks Congresses. And so what we're able to do is speed up the, uh, the visibility and the publication progress in, uh, progress in peer review. And so we were able to launch uh, the MPA legacy from the 2016 Hawaii World Conservation Congress into uh, Impact 4. What this actually meant was since we started this process at Impact 3, together with the, the, uh, the papers you see here, we've managed to accelerate the publication of somewhere in the region of 720 uh, pages of new peer-reviewed information on marine protected areas. So again, another thing that we're trying to do to, to get more information into peer review and spread the message about you know, challenging issues, but also things that work around marine protected area. And at this point, I will hand over to Gonzalo. Uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay. Um, I think uh, what I'm gonna show you is a little bit about the, the, the uh, the benefits of actually uh, getting together in this venue, uh, benefits uh, for the for the MPA community, but also benefits for our program here at NOAA. Uh, uh, you know, Impact Four was a great venue for networking uh, for governments, NGOs, community donors, practitioners, and we have an entire area, uh, the pavilion area, that serves as a meeting area to socialize, to, to, to have meetings, to engage with partners uh, and with people that are actively working in the uh, MPA arena to bring you uh, different instruments, different tools, uh, publications. So I think this is, was a great opportunity for uh, the MPA community to, to, to meet face to face with some of the people that we normally work with uh, uh, in, in, in different aspects of, of our work. Um, one of the most important things uh, for of impact and bringing impact for the first time to Latin America for a region that is not English or French speaking uh, was to engage people that normally are not part or normally do not participate in this kind of events just because the cost, just because the distance, just because you know engagement or simply because access to uh, another language. I think one of the most important things about this uh, this uh, event is that uh, Impact 4 was officially uh, a bilingual English Spanish and allowed a lot of uh, 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 meetings, engagements, side events to be actually uh, hosted in, in Spanish. In some cases with simultaneous translation, but also it allows of people that normally are not part of this kind of uh, events to, to be part of it. Uh, we also have a very strong presence from, from, from Latin American countries. Uh, uh, Diego and Felipe are going to show some of the numbers later, but uh, about 65% of all registered participants to Impact 4 were actually from the Latin American region. Uh, also, we have an opportunity to, um, to actually do business, business with our partners. Was an, an event and a venue for us to um, to to renew uh, our collaboration through you know uh, uh, documents with uh, in this case with France, with the Biodiversity Agency of France. Um, here in this picture, you can see uh, Lauren uh, Wenzel and um, uh, Finia Maras from the French uh, Biodiversity Agency. After we sign our uh, agreement. Uh, on, on collaborating, uh, collaboration on marine protected areas. We also have an opportunity to uh, renew our collaboration uh, with Chile. Uh, Chile and the United States have been working on marine and terrestrial protected areas since uh, uh, the mid-2000s. 
Uh, we already have an, a, a memorandum of understanding. We renew it at Impact 4. And this is going to be, and is uh, at this point, one of the most active uh, cooperation, bilateral cooperation agreements we have on, on marine protected areas. We also um, uh, were able to, to highlight some of the Latin American leaders in marine conservation right at the community plenary, one of the most important cases of, of, uh, of community management uh, for protected areas in the Juan Fernandez archipelago was presented and this picture is just uh, uh, at the end of that plenary when the, the, the flag of Juan Fernandez was displayed and showed to the, to the people attending the, the, uh, this event. We also, under this collaboration with Chile, we were able to um, to announce two specific uh, framework uh, collaborations with uh, between Chile and the United States in two very important areas. One of them uh, was our um, collaboration between uh, Hawaii and Rapa Nui, or better known as Easter Island in some places. But this is a cultural and conservation cooperation framework to to collaborate on marine and cultural marine resource conservation. Those are two very special and important places in, in the Polynesian culture. And just before impact, uh, a delegation from, from Hawaii uh, was able to visit Rapa Nui and consolidate this, uh, this, this, this collaboration, uh, which is going to, I mean, we just uh, have, have just started, you know, uh, uh, with some aspects of the new uh, and recently announced uh, uh, marine protect area uh, Around, around the Rapa Nui waters. Uh, this is another picture when we, when we show and formalize this relationship during Impact 4. Uh, we also um, have some of the community leaders, uh, one from uh, our, one of our sites, Papa Anamokuekea, and another person from the, uh, uh, the Rapa Nui uh, Development Commission, which has is, been is serving some sort of leader of, of marine conservation uh, in Rapa Nui. And uh, one of the things I probably would like to, to mention here is uh, I'm going to show you just a, a, a couple of minutes of a video. Uh, one of the, the ways in which uh, collaborated with, um, with, uh, with Rapa Nui or, or to seal this kind of collaboration was to present on behalf of the people of Hawaii a kahili to the people of Rapa Nui. A kahili is a royal feather standard, uh, which is, uh, it, it was presented in this case to honor the people of, of, of Rapa Nui. This particular kahili, which was uh, made by Papa Hanamokuekea Marine National Monument and the Bishop Museum in Hawaii, with the support of the Hawaiian Affairs Office, uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a symbol that was actually uh, made with feathers that were collected for a very secret place in Hawaii, um, and uh, this 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 symbol uh, was our present to the people of Rapa Nui, and um, this uh, in some way was a. Uh, a ceremony to consolidate this uh, this relationship. This video is online, and if anyone is interested, I can I can send the link to this uh, if anyone wants to see the entire video with uh, with sound. Uh, another um, activity that we were able to present and announce at Impact Four was our uh, relationship uh, between um, uh, Chile and California. This is our way to connect. The Humboldt Current and the California Current. current. Um, this this framework collaboration uh, is uh, among MPAs in Chile uh, and the United States, most specifically in California, uh, which uh, is going to include a lot of aspects of connectivity, management of, of processes, and some collaboration of exchanging people and managers uh, uh, between this among the sites. We also have a specific um, um, capacity building session, which was led by our international capacity building team uh, at, the, at the MPA Center. Um, this is also one of the most important aspects of collaboration that we do with several countries around the world. And it's a very important aspect uh, of, of, of collaboration and interest, uh, 
collaboration among uh, uh, marine protected areas. We have um, a space uh, to socialize at the at the meeting. Uh, this is a view, a general view of the of the of the pavilion, which is the area that we, you know, attendees use to 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 have meetings and, and socialize. Uh, three specific pavilions, one uh, hosted by Chile, uh, by IUCN, and by the, the Latin, Latin American Network of Parks, uh, uh, actually have their activities in this area. Um, and, uh, and again, it was, it was probably the most important area for people to, to meet partners and other uh, 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 colleagues in the, uh, of, of, of this uh, uh, marine protected area uh, community. We also have time to break, you know, we have, uh, you know, it was not only work, we, felt we had a lot of fun, it was a lot of side activities that happened at night and, you know, during the breaks. Uh, in this picture you can see uh, Pascal Atuku, who is from the uh, Marquisas Educational MPA uh, group, um, a very active person uh, in the, in the uh, uh, Big Ocean Network. We also have some trivia uh, activities, uh, and this one uh, probably Dan haven't realized this, but this what this particular question was to ask people how to pronounce uh, Dan Lafolle's last name, and we had a lot of fun because <laughs> because it, it was not a right answer. Unfortunately, you know, in these situations when you have a bilingual uh, trivia, there, there are more than one way to 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 write uh, the last name of someone. Uh, Networks uh, was an important uh, part and something that was highlighted several times during the during the meeting. Uh, in this picture, you can see Puri canals from the uh, Medpan, the Mediterranean Network for Marine Protected Areas. There was a specific activities and several activities hosted by uh, networks of protected areas uh, around the world. Um, and this is one of the future, uh, current and future ways to do business uh, among MPA groups. Um, at the very end of the activities that we have in, 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 uh, in La Serena, um, the, normally the, 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 the country that is hosting uh, impact uh, past the baton or past the, 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 uh, the venue to the next uh, um, organizer. Uh, and this opportunity, the, the uh, the steering committee for Impact 4 decided that the uh, the next venue is going to be in Canada and specifically in Vancouver in 2021. So in this picture you can see some of the, uh, rep the representatives of Chile to the right uh, giving the, the impact sextant to the uh, Canadian uh, delegation. So Canada is going to be the, the Impact 5 2021 uh, host. And uh, one of the probably the most important challenges that we have uh, at Impact, and you are going to hear this from, from Diego and Felipe, um, is uh, at the very end we have a, a high level meeting, a high level segment, uh, which actually uh, brought together leaders, uh, MPA leaders from around the world, uh, that uh, got together in a totally different venue. We have to bring this meeting from La Serena to Viña del Mar, uh, which is one of the most important uh, coastal cities uh, close to Santiago. So the entire team, the entire organizing team have to move uh, uh, the meeting to, to Viña del Mar to host uh, this, this uh, specific activity, which was led by the president of Chile, uh, Michelle Bachelet, that you can see in the very center uh, of this picture in the front row along with the uh, Prince of Monaco and several other authorities from, from, uh, from Chile and from uh, MPA and uh, agencies and, and ministers of environment and, and around the world. So uh, this meeting actually um, ended with a, the signature of a call for action on marine protected areas that um, is going to be very soon available for everyone to see in, in, uh, in the website and probably uh, Diego Felipe can uh, share some more details about this. Um, well, I think this is the end of this. I want to pass now the presentation uh, to Diego uh, or Felipe to talk about some of specific numbers. I mean, they are going to speak on behalf of the organizers of Impact 4. Diego, Felipe. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much, Gonzalo. Thank you, Lauren. This is the first time that, that we that we talk about impact after the, the event. Uh, so we have been uh, with, with a lot of a uh, lot of work on on the post uh, event because you, you know, guys, we, we we need to we need to close all the all the administra administrative issues. But the main the main the main the main thing uh, at the very beginning when we received the uh, the, the 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 responsibility of organized impact four. Uh, actually, we weren't we were we were not aware about the dimension of, of this event, uh, about the the challenges that that we we were facing. Uh, when when the when the time passed, um, we we realized about about the the, the big dimension of, of this of this congress. And but but we, we all the time we we were really excited uh, with the idea that in Chile we we host the, the one of the main uh, congress on marine protected areas and this is not this is not only not only because um, the the dimension of the congress but the possibility but also the possibility because of the possibility to impact the the global agenda and the national agenda on marine protected areas and marine conservation so. We we think today that we, we we made we made success in global scale, but also in, in na at national scale. But we are also thinking and analyzing all the dimensions of of Impact Four. We are we are still um, on on a on, on a reflection of, of the lesson learned, the main lesson learned, uh, uh, and, and other things uh, coming from from this Congress. Uh, I will show you now some uh, very early uh, numbers that, that we that we can figure out uh, to, until today regarding the, the, the attendees, the, the participant of Impact. But but first first of all, uh, I, I, I would I would show you this this slide which represented the the, the amount of different uh, partners and sponsors that. Um, it, because um, it, it was very important to, to have the, the, the support of this of all of these organizations in terms of funding, in terms of logistics, in terms of uh, spread, the communication, etc. It's not only about uh, the Ministry of Environment and, and, and IUCN and the steering committee, which is very important support for, for the, the, the organization of this kind of uh, Congress, but also a different kind of organizations, national and international, uh, supporting the idea of to have a, a, a big event dealing and, and, and dealing with uh, marine protected areas agenda. And next, please. So regard, regarding the, um, the the numbers, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would I would uh, this graphic is showing the amount of people that coming in from different kind of, of organizations. 30% coming from gov different kind of governments, uh, as, uh, as have mentioned Gonzalo before, a lot of people uh, coming uh, ha has the opportunity uh, to, to, to come in uh, Impact 4 from Latin America, because other Impact previous, uh, previous uh, Impact uh, uh, were were held on on other locations far away from South America, Australia, uh, France, and, and North America. So, and not not only because of the distance, but also the the language, it's in Spanish in this case, uh, was uh, a, a big attraction for a different kind of communities, uh, scientific, uh, government people. Uh, so it, it was a, a very very important to have the, the the possibility to 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 be on presentations held in Spanish and, and, and English at the same time. Uh, as you as, as you see as you can see in the P pie, pie chart, uh, thirty one percent of the people coming from NGOs, uh, 15, uh, 15 percent of the people are scientific and academics. And, and others, uh, other people coming from enterprises, uh, 3%, civil society, 7%, national, international uh, organisms uh, from United, uh, United Nations, 5% of the people, and the other people coming from staff and, and press. Uh, next, please. 
uh, Gonzalo mentioned uh, this uh, before, a lot of people, the main, the main portion of the people coming from Impact 4 uh, 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 is, is from South America. 63% of the people coming from different countries, Colombia, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, uh, Peru, etc. And, and a lot of people from Chile itself. Uh, other people coming from North America, uh, 13%, and uh, Europe, other than 13%. I think uh, the challenge for the future is to engage and, and give more facilities for the part participation from people uh, from Africa, especially I think because of the, you know, the, the costs of the trip, uh, of the lodging. Uh, we we have the idea in, in some in some part of the process to uh, to uh, to design a kind of uh, scholarship for for people coming from uh, non developed countries. But it was very difficult to deal with funding on this. Uh, next, please, Gonzalo. <clears throat> uh, by country, uh, obviously, uh, as Chileans, uh, we had the big opportunity to, to attend this uh, big conference. So 52% uh, of the attendees uh, comes from, uh, from Chile. But uh, we had a lot of representatives and people com coming from more than 50 countries, 60 countries, uh, roughly. Uh, but uh, the, the, mo the, 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 the most coming from Latin American countries. Next, please. Um, a lot of people pay paid for the for the participation of the Congress. Uh, we we had a, a, a fees relatively lower than other other versions of of impact. Uh, but uh, however. Some people claim for uh, free free tickets, free inv 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 invitations. So, 22% uh, of the people coming from Impact uh, were uh, free of uh, payment uh, of the ticket. Next, please. Uh, here you you can you can see a, a general uh, view of the budget. Uh, the total cost of the Congress today, it was about 1.6, 1.7 million of dollars. Uh, as, 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 you, as you can see, it's, it's not a cheap Congress, uh, but uh, because uh, we had a lot of uh, different kind of costs, the, the, the main revenues, the main, the main portion of the budget comes, come, uh, came from uh, the central government, the Ministry of Environment. Other, other part of the budget uh, came from uh, the regional government. And the other part from donors, uh, big NGOs uh, such as WWF, uh, Pew, uh, Packard, and, and other other uh, NGOs, and and the last part of, of the budget came from uh, revenues, uh, the the cost of the Congress for 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 people in in terms of participation, uh, and you you can you can see the expenditures in the second part of the of the chart. Uh, Regarding especially with, with uh, organization, logistics, uh, staff, uh, the high level meeting, all of this, uh, if we have a balance, uh, today we have a, a shortfall, uh, about uh, uh, $78,000. Uh, we, we are trying to, to cover, but uh, we, we think that this, this is marginal uh, if, we, if we compare with the general. Uh, the general amount of the of the Congress. Next, please. Uh, we we um, work it a lot in in terms of with the productions uh, production agency uh, with the manager agency um, in terms of the layout of the Congress, the the different kind of uh, technology, the different kind of uh, rooms, the number of rooms, the the, the layout of the rooms. The design of the stands, and, and, and you know, a lot of a lot of, a lot of uh, things to do uh, in in the preparation of this congress. I think uh, people enjoy it a lot. E e every space, every room. Uh, the I, I think in the evaluation, we think that the, the venue of the congress was very appropriate uh, for this kind of uh, this kind of event. Not not only uh, for the for the position, the ge geographical position of the hotel, which is in the front of the sea, but because, but also uh, because of the the city itself, because La Serena is very, 
a secure, very quiet uh, city, so it's not it's not uh, overcrowded. Uh, there's not a lot of cars, uh, so it's important to to choose uh, 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 the best place to 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 carry on this kind of congress. Next, please. Mm. Ah, Felipe. Well, uh, yes, I was uh, part of the uh, organizing team, and I was in charge of the the contents and the program of Impact Four. And and Dan mentioned um, um, at the beginning that. Uh, every day we have a different uh, theme, uh, and that started with a plenary. So with the, you know with this global vision of the of the day theme. So on, on day one, we have on, on Tuesday the fifth we have MPAs and global changes, and we were uh, for, during this day we were talking about more kind of a scientific uh, uh, knowledge, both uh, biological and social knowledge. What is going on with um, rebuilding our fisheries and climate change and all the, the global challenges we're facing. Uh, on on, uh, the, on Wednesday, we, um, uh, we went uh, back to the local communities. And this was the day where, you know, indigenous people, women, uh, small-scale fishermen uh, had their opportunity to uh, to express their, their view, you know, what is what what are the benefits, what are the challenges of for them that live by the ocean on MPAs uh, uh, during this day. Then uh, on Thursday we talk about effective management. This was was more like a, a management uh, oriented day. So a lot of NGOs and and, and uh, public agencies have the opportunity to share experiences how we manage uh, MPAs. And then uh, on the, the last day we have this um, how we go uh, further, how we move beyond what we have now. What what are we discussing beyond 2020 when um, the the IG target 11 is going to be uh, uh, finished? So what is the shared vision for the future? So this was um, basically a week of activities, uh, four full days for for. For program and contest, and, and and days before we have field trips, and the day after we have the on the weekend after we have the the high level meeting. Can I have the next please? So in terms of the program, this was a very um, um, there was a high demand of uh, participation. We received more than 700 contributions from around the world. Uh, we had uh, a scientific or or expert uh, peer review for the contributions, when, and then we have different types of uh, contributions from from oral posters and speed presentations, uh, and then knowledge cafes that were like uh, roundtables for discussion or small groups, symposium and workshops. So uh, we, we, selected, we selected a, a little more than 500 uh, contributions from more than 60 countries. Can I have the next please? And then uh, we also uh, saw impact as a good opportunity not only to discuss uh, you know, topics related to MPAs uh, within the MPA community. So we uh, as an opportunity to talk to the general public. Uh, so we actually uh, organize uh, kind of um, activities that were happening uh, during the week in La Serena. Uh, for example, we have um, a film festival uh, by, by, by the ocean. We have an art intervention. We have live music, gastronomy, you know, uh, food and, and, and seafood around MPAs. Uh, and field trips. We have the day, the, the days before the the, the con. We have two days uh, for field trip. There are local MPAs close to La Serena, so uh, hundreds of people uh, went to visit uh, these um, uh, marine reserves. Um, we also have uh, field trips to um, um, small scale fishermen villages, um, wetlands to 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 for bird watching, etc. So we actually took. La Serena and Coquimbo for a week and, 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 and have activities beyond the, the, the Congress in the hotel. Can I have the next, please? 
So this is part of what we were, I was talking, you know, the film festival, the art intervention, you know, um, visits to um, local communities, the this, this small scale uh, fishermen villages. Can I have the next please? And, 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 and Impact 4 came in a very um, a good time for Chile. We have been working in, um, you know, in um, progressing in, in terms of the surface and representation of different ecosystems um, to be protected. So um, during Impact and the, the, the weeks before, we uh, actually uh, uh, mobilized the, all the political and technical um, power of Chile to uh, announce uh, new MPAs. And what we actually announced uh, now is, uh, uh, um, is uh, Chile now is, is having a new leadership in terms of uh, marine conservation. So the week before impact, we uh, finalized uh, an indigenous consultation for Rapa Nui. So we're, we're creating a large um, multi-use MPAs in Rapa Nui. And, and now we're working in the new in the announcements on, on large uh, MPAs in, in oceanic islands in Juan Fernandez and another one in um, Cabo de Hornos in the south of Chile in uh, Cape Horn uh, between the South American continent and the Antarctica. So now we're working, we use IMPACT to actually announce these uh, MPAs and now we're uh, finalizing the, the process of the creation of these MPAs. And if we uh, concrete all these MPAs, we're going to be protecting roughly 46% uh, of the entire EEC of Chile. Can I have the next, please? So uh, in terms of the, 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 um, the political power, for us it was very important to have our very own president, Michel Bachelet, during the high-level meeting, uh, um, Talking about MPAs, you know, for, for us that you know, for the political uh, power to to because they have so many different priorities, so many different topics they have to cover. To have our very own president talking about MPAs and our ministry, our politician talking about MPAs was a very good opportunity for us. Can I have the next one. I was talking, uh, we used um, uh, Impact 4 to announce uh, the creation of uh, the, the, the large MPA in Rapa Nui. That's going to be uh, roughly 700,000 square kilometers mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, pristine and unique ecosystem in the, in the southernmost part of the Polynesia. Uh, we have a very interesting process with the local communities, uh, with the indigenous communities, uh, that finally voted uh, uh, favoring um, uh, the creation of this MPA. Can I have an uh, Felipe, uh, let me let me uh, take the the microphone for the last two slides. Yes, please. Uh, uh, I just want to tell everyone that this meeting, as you can you could have seen in this presentation, was a large gathering of all the MPA community many places around the world, more than 1,100 people attending this Congress for more than 60 countries. And uh, you may think that the, the team that put all this together was probably, you know, several dozens of people. Uh, I'm going to tell you that these four people you see in this picture is some sort of tribute to the people that actually put this Congress together. Um, from left to right, you can see uh, Juan Luis Orellana, uh, Felipe Paredes, the person that was just uh, speaking, Carolina Harpa, and Diego Flores at the very end to the right. Uh, I was lucky enough uh, to join them. Uh, I was the, probably the fifth person in the team in Santiago uh, when I joined them back in, in April. Uh, to try to help a little bit, but I was absolutely impressed that all all this all the stuff that you were able to see was actually put together by a very small group of people. Uh, that was this is the core team. Uh, there were some people uh, that were actually helping locally in La Serena, some political leaders and some NGOs and so many other people that were collaborating. But uh, this was an enorm enormous effort of a very highly professional team, very committed team that put this together. So this is a, in some way, a tribute to the group that put this together. 
and um, of course, you know, uh, there were so many people during this uh, during this uh, Congress that um, that helped along the way. Uh, you can see here some of the main actors that were pretty much working uh, behind scenes uh, most of the time. But uh, uh, this enormous enormous effort uh, was uh, probably uh, put together for a very very small group of people with not much budget. But uh, I mean, we we were all very committed to this. So I think uh, is is uh, this is what can you know uh, the, this energy uh, about marine conservation can actually uh, generate. We were all very happy about what happened, and we were able to put together. With uh, with a very small group of people, thanks to everyone, and especially to the core team that I show in the previous picture. So uh, I think with that, that will be the end of this presentation. Okay, thank you for, to all of our speakers for the great overview you just provided. And I would like to encourage anyone who has questions or comments to please go ahead and send those in. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. In the meantime, I will start. Uh, there's one very highly motivated person person who's provided a couple of comments, Rodrigo Zamora, uh, you all may know him, and he, his comment has to do with the lack of sufficient community engagement in some of the MPA processes in Chile, uh, and specifically not only the local communities, but those that rely on the ecosystem services in the area, and feeling as though those were not sufficiently consulted in the process in Cape Horn. So I don't know if either of you would like to comment on that? Yes, well, in, 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 um, in, in the Cape Horn, in Cabo de Hornos, uh, the, uh, there's uh, different groups pushing for the protection of the area. The local university and uh, research center uh, that they work there, um, they have been uh, you know, in contact with the local communities, and then there's, um, and the, and the, the uh, regional government have uh, done a lot of uh, contacts with the uh, different users of the area um, that we want to protect. In particular, well, all the creation of all MPAs uh, is different. Uh, there are different ecosystems, there are different users, there are different activities that take place in, in the different areas. In, in Cape Horn, in particular, um, the most important actors were uh, fishermen, and particularly um, this uh, Chilean sea bass uh, fishermen, and these are a uh, few but a uh, very uh, big uh, industrial fishermen. And what we're doing there uh, is now uh, through the different uh, um, fisher, uh, fishery management committees, we're um, presenting the proposals uh, of the MPA. And actually, we are considering what they're saying in terms of the, the areas they want to protect and kind of uh, uh, making, um, you know, both conservation and the use of the area um, work together. So we are um, um, working with the main users of the area. Okay, thank you. So the other question that's come in is from Jonathan Putnam from the U.S. Park Service, who asks, how much of the, of the Congress was recorded or is available online? And maybe you could also talk about the plans to do proceedings. Yes, we, um, thank you, John, for the question. Uh, yes, we will have uh, not all, but a big portion of the of the streaming stream, stream sessions, especially the, the the panels at the very beginning of, of each day, as well as the high level meeting uh, on on videos. We are we are um, uh, doing that that. That recording. Re recording exactly. Thank you. Uh, and and we will upload uh, those files in the next couple of, of, of weeks. We are doing that. And regard and regarding the the proceedings, of course, we are we, we have we are planned uh, to uh, in terms of uh, to write and to to deliver uh, those proceedings. We need to to work together with the steering committee as well uh, in this and on this issue. Felipe, I don't know if you have. Yeah, and, and we, we have recorded the, the plenary sessions. Mm -hmm. Those are all, um, we have all the recordings, and uh, we, we, we would like to uh, upload them into our website pretty soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And can I, just add, can I just add, Lauren? Yes. Uh, from, 
IUCN side, uh, we are doing a, another special issue of Aquatic Conservation, uh, which will feature some of the key papers that were presented at Impact 4. And I'm pleased to say that uh, it looks like we're going to have a bumper edition uh, where we've got uh, teams working on over 30 papers related to uh, material that was presented at Impact 4. And that will be released uh, in, in, a, in a year and a bit, probably. Okay, great. Um, we do have another question from Laurie Gourlay who asks, how do you see UN World Heritage Sites as contributing to the goals of marine protected areas and to Impact 5? Anyone want to tackle that one? I think that's quite challenging because um, uh, I may be speaking out of order here, but my understanding is uh, that the, the US position has changed on World Heritage recently and they will have an observer mission at uh, UNESCO. So I'm not sure how that impacts into the, uh, the overall uh, situation. I mean, I'm certainly internationally, we hope that uh, what has been done and what has been recognized uh, will continue to move forward. Well, and I will add, and uh, John Putnam was just on the question, so he may want to chime in uh, if he has additional information, but although the UN has announced plans to withdraw from UNESCO, the US does plan to remain active in the World Heritage uh, because it is a separate convention and, and the US has signed that convention. So the intent is, is to remain active with the World Heritage component and with several other aspects of um, of UNESCO's work, such as the Man in the Biosphere program. So I, we're going to wrap up here in just a moment. So I also wanted just to ask if anyone wants to just briefly share a particular moment, a person you met or something you heard that stuck with you from the conference. Anyone would like to, to respond to that? I, I think uh, I'll just make a sort of final comment from my side, which is just to reiterate what I said at the start, and Gonzalo's talked about just now, that these are massive undertakings uh, to do this, and and Chile joins an elite series of countries that has helped the global community to be able to step up and move forward with marine protection. And when we look back at Impact 4, we'll see the line go up uh, in many different ways as a result of the commitment from the individuals on this call, but others as well. And from my UCN, we're extremely grateful for that. And uh, we, we look forward to carrying the spirit forward into Impact 5. Thanks, Dan. I, I think I would like to add to that, that um, bringing the people and ocean together was one of the mottos of this, uh, was the motto of this conference. But uh, another aspect that we try to emphasize uh, a lot, a, throughout the Congress and also at the call for action of marine protected areas that this is also a time for implementation and I think it's important uh, on all the discussions and people that we talk to the idea that uh, creating marine protected areas is, is, is great, it's a, it's a good advancement for marine conservation but also we need to pay a lot of emphasis and, and donor agencies, governments, NGOs need to pay a lot of uh, emphasis in the implementation and the effective management of marine protected areas. I think that is a, is a very important part because there are many MPAs out there that probably do not have capacity, they don't have management plans, they don't have a staff, they don't have funding, and they, in other words they are paper parks, but I think it's important uh, that a, a, an important phase from now on is the implementation and that that is another important message that we try to deliver during this, during this meeting with pretty much everyone we talk to. Thanks. Okay, we have about a minute left. I don't know, Diego, Felipe, would you like the last word in terms of any particular, um, something you feel particularly proud of about the conference or something that you've taken with you that you heard there? Well, for me, where for our team was a, a huge challenge. I mean, we work in uh, our regular job is to create, you know, MPAs where more technical stuff in which we were, you know, at some point dealing with so many details about uh, the Congress that it was super challenging at times. But uh, at the same time, it was very rewarding. It was our pleasure to have all the people that came from, you know, 60 countries to Chile 
uh, when you know we have many different uh, you know problems or little problems during the organization, but after all, after seeing you know the, all the attendees and the people happy and uh, you know making friends, may networking with other people, we were uh, extremely happy uh, with the results of the congress and and we would like to thank all the, the support from our colleagues from uh, other countries, especially uh, people from NOAA that were very supportive and uh, people from uh, our partners from the IUCN and WCPA Marine, they were uh, instrumental in, in, in the organization of the Congress. Yes, and another part is uh, we, th we think, we actually think that we, uh, we, we, we belong to that special group of uh, countries pushing, pushing forward the, the marine protected areas agenda at the, at the international level. We, we, belong, we, we feel that belong that selected group of, of countries and, and people. Uh, and second one, uh, we, need, we need to use the, the effect of Impact 4 in terms of national or domestic regulations. Today we have a, we have a bill in the Congress in order to create a, a new agency in charge of uh, Biodiversity and, and protected areas, including the marine protected areas. So we need to capitalize and, and use the, the effect of, of having our president and other leaders of marine protected areas in Chile in order to 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 push and move forward that bill in the Congress and and and, and to have that new agency in Chile working with the implementation and with the people on marine protected areas and terrestrial as well. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank all of our speakers, and I especially want to thank Diego and Felipe as hosts of this terrific event. Thank you so much. And uh, if anyone didn't get to hear the whole thing or wants to share it with friends who couldn't make it, it will be posted on Open Channels. Uh, I think their new name now is Octo, so you can look for it there. And thanks very much for joining us.